the Single Mom Podcast, episode 54. Sex, drinking, smoking, drugs. Those are the big four, right? Never, I think, in my my father's wildest dreams did he ever think, I'm going to have to tell my daughter not to eat laundry detergent. (laughs) This is the Single Mom Success Podcast. Our mission is to help single moms find advice, support, ideas, and hopefully some humor along the way to help them navigate through this crazy single parenting gig and build the most amazing lives for themselves and their children. Please be sure to stop by the singlemomblog.com for more great articles, free downloads, giveaways, and more. Now, let's dive in. Hey guys, welcome to today's Single Mom Podcast. I hope you are well. So it has been an, like a really long time since I've done a podcast. Uh, there's actually several reasons for that. Uh, the first one is I uh, was getting distinct feedback from my ex indicating that he was uh, stalking my podcast or my blog. Uh, So I have like my own little troll section, I guess, um, of people who I don't know if it's him or maybe it's people that know him that sort of stalk my podcast or my blog. Um, And if so, hey, how are you? So uh, I, I, you know, and I didn't really, I, I decided to shy, I started shying away from doing my podcast. Um, just because it just seemed like it was just causing problems. And then I realized, you know what? Screw that. I'm not going to let this fool and any of the people who want to stalk my blog and report back to him on what I say or do, uh, dictate whether or not I do this. And so I decided that I was going to get back into it. Um, one of the other reasons that sort of contributed to it is there was a lot of really crappy stuff that was going on. Um, in the world, and it really started overflowing into my podcast. Um, If you have listened to any of my previous podcasts, if you're not new, and if you're somebody who has stuck around all this time, even though I haven't done one in a while, by the way, thank you. Um, (laughs) But uh, I, I do have very strong political leanings and strong political beliefs, and the current political administration uh, was really pissing me off. And, uh, it, and it still is, it still is, but it was really starting to affect what I was putting out. And every time I went to record something, it just felt, it, it shied away from the, from the intent of this podcast. I don't mind doing one or two podcasts where I'm actually talking about sort of current events and things that are going on in the political structure, because a lot of the things that are going on affect uh, me personally, as well as other families and single parents. And so there's a lot of stuff out there that, um, you know, I think is just, I personally, from my viewpoint and my leanings, I do not like a lot of the things that are going on with this administration. Now, that does not mean that, you know, as a listener, uh, you may not agree with me and that's totally fine. Uh, I have no problem having a discourse with people. I have no problem having uh, open debate or, uh, you know, just having a dialogue with people because that's how you learn. That's how you grow. That's how you get more information. Um, but I did find that I was starting to become very, um, sort of, you know, belligerent (laughs) would be a good word for it. Maybe, uh, about a lot of the things. And I still am. I'm still very opinionated. If you follow me on Twitter, uh, I tweet a lot towards the administration about the administration. I think a lot of the stuff that's going on is just absolutely ludicrous. Um, and I don't like the person who's in office and that's just something that is. And if that causes me to lose listeners, that's fine. I lose listeners. I'm not, I'm not here, uh, doing this to necessarily, uh, make a lot of friends. You know, I have the people who are going to be my people, the people that, you know, are okay with what I have to say. They want to listen to what I have to say. And then there's going to be others that don't, but regardless, um, it definitely was causing, a lot of everything that I recorded when I went back to edit and listen to it, it was just really negative. It was a lot of negative. And I don't, I don't want that to be, you know, my podcast, some negative I get, but it was just everything. Everything was anger and, and frustration and annoyance. And, uh, and I don't want that. So, uh, I decided that it would be a good time for me to take a break, especially with, you know, finding out that, you know, my ex was kind of stalking my podcast or blog or had his little minions doing it for him again. Hey, minions, uh, or trolls or whoever you are. (laughs) Um, but, 
uh, I decided when this year came around and the new year started, I needed to get back into this. And it has taken me a couple weeks to get into it because I've had a ton of stuff on my plate, a lot of stuff going on with my kids. Uh, my boys are going to be graduating high school this year. And holy crap, I did not realize <laughs> how much there was when it came to senior pictures and cap and gown ordering. And, and it it's like, it's as bad as the wedding industry. And I'm going to do a podcast about that because it absolutely blew my mind. I was flabbergasted by what my children brought home. It was ridiculous. Um, but so I've had that going on and it's their senior year. So we're making sure they've got all their classes. Uh, not to mention trying to get everything ready for my son Gage because um, while he does graduate, he is going to stay in the district. And um, I've been kind of beating my head up against a wall to get him to sign up for this transitions program, which is something that our school offers for kids with uh, developmental delays to try and help them sort of become more self-sufficient and be able to potentially live on their own and, and really sort of just give them their best shot at independent living if that's a possibility for them. Um, and so uh, I'm also going to do a podcast about that because in all honesty, to be perfectly honest, I don't feel that these things should be just for special education kids. I think that a lot of the stuff that this play, this program teaches should just be standard for kids. Any kid going through high school, about ready to become an adult and just like get tossed out into the world, hoping that you were <laughs> given the skills you needed. Um, so I'll do another podcast about that. So stay tuned and keep an eye out for that one because... Um, there's some pretty shocking statistics out there about the the number of kids in college that like don't even know how to boil an egg or have no concept of how to do their own laundry and things like that. <laughs> um, it's astonishing to me. Uh, so that's going to be coming down the pipe. So anyway, I've had a ton of stuff going on with that. Um, we've had, you know, the holidays and Christmas and, you know, every time I sat down to think, OK, I just need to get my podcast back up and going Something else sort of came down the pipe and life got in the way. So this year the intent is, and, and the, the, the mission and the plan is that uh, there will be a podcast every week. Obviously, I've missed the first couple of weeks, so I'm off to a bang up start. <laughs> but that's the whole goal. And in the, in the, so I've spent the first few weeks of, of January sort of trying to plan out how I'm going to make everything function this year so that I'm a little bit more on top of things. So with that being said, to dive into today's podcast, um, one of the things I'm going to talk about today, and I honestly cannot believe that this is what I'm doing a podcast on, um, I actually did a podcast before and a blog post about this or something similar, and I find it absolutely insane that I'm having to do this again, and I'm, I find it ridiculous that I'm having to say what I'm going to have to say, um, because in all honesty, it should be common sense to me, right? But here goes. People should not eat Tide Pods, right? Like, <laughs> how did this become a thing? Okay, if you have not been paying attention, there is this new challenge out. And here's the thing. I find these challenges to be asinine, right? It, it, it's not even productive challenges. Like, I would love to see a challenge, to be honest, of, of you know, how many good deeds can you do in a week? Let's make that a challenge. How, ma uh, how many homeless people can you help? How many coats can you collect? How much, uh, how many sandwiches can you make for the homeless community? Um, like, can you do a challenge that's productive? Like even the, the ALS challenge, right? Where people, the ice bucket challenge, right? At least that was, it promoted something. It brought awareness out. Now it seems like the challenges that kids are doing is just promoting stupidity. Like, that's what it is. It's promoting stupidness. And, and I don't even think that's a word, but I'm going to make it a freaking word because it's just asinine to me that teenagers, teenagers are freaking eating laundry detergent pods. And that's a thing. Why? would you do this? Who would want to do this? What possible, like, so here's the thing, Tide Pods and, and all the little pod people, Tide and Gain, I think they're the only two that do pods, is Tide and Gain, right? They had to completely, like, redo their packaging, and they had to put big old warnings on there, because chill babies, 
babies and toddlers were putting them in their mouth because they look like candy, right? Because they're brightly colored. They don't look gross. They look like candy, something that a kid would eat. Not to mention babies and toddlers tend to put anything in their mouth that they find, right? And, you know, God forbid parents be responsible and keep the laundry detergent up where kids can't reach it. But, you know, hey. Um, So regardless, yes, it is important. So they made these bags almost impossible to get into now. It's like, I can't tell you how many times I got so frustrated. And yes, I know they're probably very simple, but you know, sometimes I just can't push the little tab down hard enough to get the stupid Ziploc bag to open. And one I got was completely broken. Like the whole damn thing came off. It popped off. So I literally have taken scissors to my tie bags, right? To stick them. Cause I saved the little, the little plastic tubs, you know, and I just pour the bag into those. So anyway, regardless, So they had to make it really difficult to get into these things, right? They had to childproof it, which is fine, which is good. You should do that for anything that could potentially hurt, poison, or kill a a small child. I did not realize that we were living in a day and age where you had to freaking put warnings on there for grown-ass kids who know better. I do not understand this. When did it become like, and like I said, in in the previous podcast with the challenge, it's always something new and stupid. It's like they need to take the level of stupid up to the next level. And I don't know if they're doing it because they feel it will help them get likes or views or shares or tweets or followers or whatever it is or subscribers. It's still fucking dumb. It's dumb. You don't I mean, literally, would you open a bottle of Tide and pour it down your throat? No, no, you wouldn't do that. But because some moron decided I'm going to bite into this on my YouTube channel and then share it and challenge others to do it, some other dumbass teenager said, oh, I can do that. And it is ridiculous. We are celebrating stupidity in this country. And, you know, I'm going to make that a whole political thing. It's going to start at the top. There's some stuff at the top. (laughs) But come on. I don't care what your political affiliation is. I don't care what your parenting style is. I think we can all agree that it's stupid that children have to be told. Teenagers have to be told. And young kids, too. I mean, if you're older than five... This should just be normal logic, I think. That stuff is icky. You shouldn't put it in your mouth. It can make you sick. But there are constant challenges like this. There was the the one that kicked off my uh, original post was that stupid ass Kylie Jenner challenge where kids were sucking their lips into like a, a glass or something to try and make their lips all puffy. And their lips got bruised and deformed and like they were hurting themselves. Like, You have to, like, it never occurred to you that that might be stupid? Really? It's important for you to have lips that look like some, like you got stung by a bee in your face? So much so that you're willing to damage yourself, potentially? And then there was, what, the one where kids were setting themselves on fire? They were standing in the shower, setting them, pouring, like, a nail polish remover or some shit on themselves, and setting themselves on fire. Literally setting themselves on fire fire. Why? Why? I do not understand the logic behind this, right? It is just insane. And I, you know, and I realize as a parent of teenagers, your teenagers are going to do dumb stuff simply because they're teenagers. We did dumb stuff when we were teenagers that our parents were like, what in the hell were you thinking? I get it. That happens. That's kind of a rite of passage. But for the love of God, did any of you parents think that you were going to have to literally sit? Like, I can't believe I had to sit my teenagers and my 10 year old daughter down and say, okay, I know that you guys probably already know this, but just in case, don't eat Tide Pods. If I catch you, Eating Tide Pods. I swear, 
not the upset stomach and the trip to the hospital or any other stuff that might happen to you as an effect of eating that Tide Pod will be nothing compared to the smackdown I will lay on your dumb ass. Okay? I would hope that my children have been raised in a fashion where you know that's not good for you and you probably shouldn't shouldn't stick that stupid shit in your face, but you know, just to make sure. And I swear to you, all three of my kids looked at me like, are you crazy? Why would we eat a Tide Pod? And thankfully, you know, my daughter is more social media savvy than my boys because, um, you know, my son Connor still does not have a Facebook page and he doesn't really want one. He's okay without having one. He thinks they're kind of dumb. Um, and then, like, he just has no desire to have one. Uh, and then... My son Gage uh, recently got one, uh, and he uses it to kind of chat back with me. I mean, he he talks to his friends via the messenger and stuff, and um, he can, uh, you know, post his YouTube videos that he makes on there. But uh, for the most part, he shares selfies, a lot of selfies. <laughs> he takes more selfies than uh, I think I ever have. <laughs> But he likes it. It's it's fun for him. But um, his activities are closely monitored, uh, um, what he's doing on there and, and uh, things like that. So, uh, but again, I'm not naive enough to think that my, he's not. I mean, there are things that I know that he's done that I don't know about. And I'm sure he's looked at things that I don't want to know about. And, I, you know, teenagers are teenagers and they're going to do what they're going to do. So in no way am I saying my children are, are perfect because they're not. Every teenager struggles and every teenager does stupid things and every teenager makes mistakes. Every person makes mistakes. But I'm hoping and I told them, I said, you know, I hope that I have raised you in a, a fashion where you don't just do what the crowd does ignoring that voice in your head that says this is really stupid <laughs> like you still have enough logic in your brains to go you know and my son god bless him he is hysterical sometimes gage is he has his moments there's times where you're just like oh son that was the worst i just like you know <laughs> he makes a comment where you're just shaking your head but every so often he has these gems that just pop out of him where he's just really on. And he looks at me and he goes, Mom, he goes, I have a brain injury. I have brain damage and I still wouldn't do that. <laughs> and I just started laughing and my kids are all laughing. And I'm like, good. He goes, how stupid do you have to be to eat laundry detergent? <laughs> So, you know, my son, God bless him. I just, I was like, see, good, good. I'm proud of you <laughs> for knowing that that's just, yeah. And so I, I don't understand. And I'm, and again, I'm certain that the parents of mo the majority of these kids are good parents. They've, they've done their best, but kids nowadays, it just seems like, I don't know if maybe, it, you know, this social media, it, you know, the YouTube and the sharing and the channels and all this stuff that, that has happened just in the past several years um, has just brought about a whole new level of parenting need. Like, you know, it's brought in a new thing that we as parents have to start you know, helping to reinforce because, you know, as parents, you know, we always try and teach our kids, or at least we, I think we should be teaching our kids, you know, be your own person. Don't be a follower. You know, don't, you know, make your own decisions based on your own moral compass and what you think or know is right and wrong. Like that's important in life. You want to be a good, strong individual, right? Both inside and out. So I, I think that, you know, all parents try and, and instill that in our children, but it seems like we sort of have to double down on that now, right? Like it's now it's like we have to make it clear, like just because like it is not worth hurting yourself to gain followers. It's not worth, you know, um, doing something dumb like this to, to see how many shares you get or likes you get. And, and it just, you know, it's astonishing to me that there are so many kids out there that it's just, they don't think about it, right? They don't think about it. They don't stop and go, you know, this is probably not a good idea. 
that little voice in their head, I'm sure it's there somewhere, but it totally gets overwritten by, oh my God, my followers are going to love this. I'm going to get so many likes. I'm going to get so many shares. I'm going to get so many more subscribers. It's going to be awesome, right? It doesn't make sense to me. There was that kid, uh, what's his name? Uh, Logan, Logan Paul, Paul, I can't remember. Anyway, he's like, he's the brother of the kid who was on my daughter's show, The Bizarre Vark. She likes that show. Anyway, I can't keep track of all the YouTube people. I just can't. I don't know how she does. Anyway, um, <laughs> that kid, though, that went to Japan and took a, like a drone or he went to a, a forest that is is known it's where people go and they commit suicide right and it's it's you know it's it's something that's part of the culture there it's not it's not something that's a good thing i personally i mean it's just it, it is what it is it's something that they they have right it's a it's a thing um but so this kid goes and, and really he's not a kid i mean he's a kid to me but i think he's like in his 20s i think i don't know again i don't keep track of all the youtubers but um he took a video of, of a, a man or a person who, who had committed suicide and he videoed it and he live streamed it or he uploaded it to YouTube. I don't know, but he, he put it out there and this guy has followers that are like kids, like kids, 10 year olds, 11 year olds. So these kids are, are seeing a dead body. And they're watching this guy and he's just sort of laughing about it. And he's, he's making jokes or something. And, um, I never watched the video because I just, I couldn't bring myself to it. And, and it got taken down before, uh, it, it, I ever could not that I wanted to, cause I would have been even more angry, but, and I stopped and I thought about it. And again, and this is, and again, I had to have a conversation with my daughter. I'm like, hi, I know you like this guy. And she goes, well, I follow his brother. I said, well, whoever I'm like, I don't want you following this guy's channel. I don't want you watching any of his videos. And then I had to explain to her what he did. I was like, he posted a video of, of somebody who had killed themselves, you know? And, and I said, you know, to me that, that indicates somebody who has become sort of morally bankrupt. Like they have become so concerned with a social media presence that they are ignoring the basic right and wrong of, of just society of being a good human being. I'm willing, <clears throat> you know, this person is basically saying, uh, you know, I'm totally willing to forego human decency if it gets me likes, if it gets me subscribers. Now, later, he sort of backtracked. And he was like, well, I was trying to bring awareness to suicide. You know, you can do that with words. You don't show a dead body. So, you know, his apology was very hollow because it was just sort of like, you know, you can't sit there and giggle or laugh or make fun of someone who has died and then try and backtrack it, it, the fact that she would post something out there, you know, and someone I saw mentioned, you know, in a comment, you know, what if nobody knew yet, right? What if his family had no idea that he had done that? And, and the way that they find out is by some dumbass YouTuber posting that video online. And that's how they find out that their loved one killed themselves. Right. It, it, it's and so not only is it a horrifying thing to find out, regardless of who breaks the news to you, but you're watching it on YouTube for the whole world to see. And not only that, but some dumb schmuck making it a joke. Right. It just astonishes me how much social media, YouTube, things like that have just overwritten people's common sense. Just completely overwritten it. It is that instant gratification of likes, shares, tweets, retweets that all of a sudden, you know, makes it okay to completely ignore your common sense and your common decency. So much so that you'll eat Tide Pods, right? I just do not understand so much so that you will set yourself on fire. Hey, look at me. How long can I stay on a flame before I have to put myself out? It is ridiculous. And, you know, and as parents, I think it's just so hard anymore because there's so much information coming from so many different places all at once at the speed of light, right? It's just instant. Something happens, they record it, they upload it and bam, it's there, right? 
and then it's there again and something else and something else. It's, it's like a constant, you know, barrage of just boom, 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 right? Here's the newest thing. And then a million people are doing it in five minutes flat, right? Who would have ever thought that someone eating a Tide Pod would then become this global example of just dumbassery <laughs> for kids to be stupid? I mean, if you would have told me even a week ago, yeah, kids are going to start eating Tide Pods, I'd be like, no, <laughs> no, come on. No, nobody's dumb enough to do that. Clearly they are. So as parents, you know, what do we do? You know, I think we just have to double down and really get on top of our kids and just be like, look, I know you're going to do stupid stuff. Y you are right? You're a kid, you're a teenager, where everybody does stupid stuff. But at least have common sense, right? There's somewhere in your time, your lifespan, multiple times it's going to happen where somebody says, hey, let's do this. Or someone says, hey, here's this challenge, right? And kids, you know, will start doing it. And you'll have friends and people you know, or people online who start doing it at some point that's going to happen. It's going to happen a bunch of times. There's going to be a voice inside your head somewhere that says that's dumb. Listen to that voice <laughs> because nine times out of 10, it's going to be right. And no matter how many likes or follows or tweets you get, you'll probably regret it. I mean, I can't imagine there is any amount of, social media clout that I would get that would <laughs> convince me that sticking a Tide Pod in my mouth and eating it was a good idea in hindsight. <laughs> I just don't see it ever. So, you know, parents, moms, dads, I mean, I know this is a single mom podcast, but if there's any dads out there that happen to listen, um, seriously. Like, I, I think this is the time to start just doubling down on your kids. Just say, look, you know, I can't believe I'm having to have this conversation with you. But you know it's a bad idea to do this, right? <laughs> you know that it's dumb, right? And as a kid, you know, you're going to do stupid stuff that, you know, and I've even told my kids this, my teenagers especially, I'm like, I know you're going to do stuff just because you know it's going to bug me. I, I fully prepared for that, you know, just as you need to be fully prepared for the ass kicking you're going to get, you know, if you do that stuff. But, um, you know, just <laughs> please just, you know, I hope that you have at least enough common sense that you're not going to do the stuff that's just really dumb. That's just so bad for you. It's one thing to do something to annoy your parents. Kids are going to do that forever right? But doing something that is horrifyingly bad for you. I mean, going into your kitchen sink and drinking drain cleaner is, is not a good way to get back at your parents. It's not, you know, it's not a way to annoy your parents. It's dangerous, you know? And, and I think that I'm hopeful that I've established enough of that in my kids. Um, you know, because we've had those conversations. I mean, we've had, hell, we've had that conversation when it comes to drugs, right? <clears throat> My kids have seen some of their idols, their, their, their biggest idols and icons die because of drugs. And so from the time they were little to now, they have seen so many people and they're, I'm like, oh, so-and-so, you know, Michael Jackson died, you know, and that's when my son became obsessed with Michael Jackson. Prince died. Um, you know, this actor died. This person died. This person died. The kid from Glee died, right? What happened to him? He overdosed on heroin. He died from drug overdoses. And, you know, they sit there and my kids are like, what? what? I'm like, see, I'm like, just understand when you do this, when you put this in your body, you're putting things in there that are not supposed to be there. It's, it's poison. It's toxic. It's bad for your body. 
you know, <clears throat> not just the, the potential fact that you could become addicted, but just, I mean, and I broke it down to him. I'm like, seriously, would you go into our kitchen and take the drain cleaner or the, the tile scrubber or, you know, this or that, any of this stuff, would, a battery acid, would you take any of that, stick it in a, a syringe and inject it into your body? No. Well, that's kind of what you're doing. You know, you're putting toxins in your body. You know, and I'm not a whole purist. I used to smoke. I've drank. I, you know, um, smoked weed in high school. I'm not totally anti, you know, you know, Bible thumping drugs are all bad. I get that there's, you know, I have no problem with weed. I live in Colorado, so. <laughs> but uh, um, at the same time, I'm just like, but these things are not natural things. They should not be in your body. They're not good for you. And so, you know, it's just that same conversation. I've had that conversation with my kids from the time they were little, little, you know. And so I hope that those types of things have, have instilled a certain amount of common sense in my kids where I don't care what other kids are doing and I don't care what YouTube is showing and I don't care what your favorite, uh, you know, YouTuber has done. This is stupid. You know, I draw the line on a lot of YouTube stupidity. My daughter's like, Mom, I want to do the one where, you know, they ask questions and they pour food on each other's heads. I'm like, why is every YouTube idea that you want to do require cleanup afterward? I don't understand. <laughs> Can't we do something that doesn't require a mop and a bucket and a significant waste of food? Like, And so my daughter's like, she started one day, she started getting out all these cans and stuff. And then she was piling them. I was like, what are you doing with all that food? She's like, oh, me and my friend, we're going to go do this challenge. And we're going to pour all this. I'm like, the hell you are. You are not wasting all of that food just so that you can record a YouTube video. Hell no. You want to do that? You wait till you can get a job and you can pay for that food yourself. Because I'll be damned if you're putting good food on top of your heads just to record a video. No, 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 no. <laughs> it is ridiculous. I, I just... Oh, so I'm hoping as parents, you guys are out there instilling that type of just logic, right? In your kids. Just be smart, right? Be smart about it, kid. Don't stick things in your mouth that are bad for you. Tide pods are bad for you. They're meant to wash your clothes. They're not meant to stick in your face. You're not supposed to swallow them ever. You're not supposed to ingest them. I, I don't understand the, the why. It just, mm. <sighs> It is so hard sometimes being a parent. Just, you know, it used to be you just had to handle kids being stupid. Now it's like they've decided to take it up several notches. And the stupidity level has just gone through the roof of stuff that parents have to keep an eye out for, right? It's just, I don't think my father ever had to worry about this. I think, you know, the biggest thing he ever worried about was me smoking. I think that me smoking or drinking or doing drugs. Those were like the three biggies. And getting pregnant. Sex, drinking, smoking, drugs. Those are the big four, right? Never, I think, in my, my father's wildest dreams did he ever think, I'm going to have to tell my daughter not to eat laundry detergent. <laughs> I don't get it. Oh, I just don't get it. Oh, but you know, I guess that's the world we live in. So we have to adapt, right? So um, go out there. Have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. And, uh, you know, Good luck to you in the trenches, and hopefully we all survive the next stupid thing that comes out and starts trending. <laughs> Have a good day, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks for joining me today for the Single Mom Success Podcast. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it inspirational in some way. Don't forget to visit thesinglemomblog.com for more of our podcasts, articles, downloads, and free giveaways. I hope that you have a fantastic day and never forget that you are amazing.